Hello, it's Stephanie with Coffee, Paper, Scissors. Okay, you guys, I am going to get started on a project, a Christmas project, a couple of them. I think I'm going to try and make two. So a few years ago, two years ago, three years ago, I don't know for sure, I made a three ring binder journal, a Christmas journal, and I still get comments on that particular one. So I thought I would try and make something similar to that. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is what I did. I should go back and look at the video, but I think that's what it was. I took um, one of these out of a binder and added it to a book. And I had had questions on how I did it and that sort of thing. So I thought I would bring you along to do that today. This is probably gonna take me a couple of days. I have two different books that I thought I would try and make journals from. And this one I have been pulling things out, you know, for a while, but I thought, oh, it would be fun to use the cover because it's really cute. And then a totally different feel would be this one. So I bought two of these. I went to the thrift store yesterday and I bought two of them. Now, normally what you would do is try and find one that this is on the spine, but they didn't have it. They had smaller ones, but I didn't want a small one. So what I, and then what I would do would, I would have just cut it, um, just cut it off and get rid of the sides. Now I'm going to have to cut this and then pretend that it, you know, that was the spine, but that's fine because we want it on the chipboard. So, you know, it, it works out. And let's go ahead and just get started with that. I'll show you how I do that. Um, I didn't know that I was going to do that right away. So I have an old, when I first started doing this, this is the one I use. It is destroyed. So I keep it so that I can um, destroy it a little bit more. What I'm going to do is add that much, you know, so I want this much space on this side. Let's see what that space is. Not quite half, okay. I think what I will do, I think it was 3 eighths. So I'm just gonna make a mark here. I'm trying to line it up with the metal. Be able to see it real good. Are you guys in camera? Okay, so I just made three marks. This one doesn't really reach. to make a line probably, but I'm going to make a line. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and it's not going to be real easy because these are going to be in the way. But we'll go ahead and give myself a line to start with. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can see it, so that's probably good enough. And unfortunately, see, I, I have to work with it on this side, but how am I gonna get something right there? I don't know, I'm just gonna have to go for it. Let me grab my X-Acto knife. I got a new X-Acto knife since you know, while I was taking a break, you know, I, um, I was still purchasing a few things here and there, but not much, to be honest. I, I just couldn't think about it. I'm just looking for a straight edge here. So I'm going to use the one that, you know, for fabric. And, um, unfortunately I am not left-handed. And <laughs> so if I turn it around, I don't think that's gonna work either. Let me see. I can try, but I don't think so. 
it might, it might. So I'm just putting my edge onto, and hopefully I'm, hopefully I'm good here. We're just gonna go for it. And this is probably gonna take quite a few swipes. Those are definitely in the way. But it's cutting through pretty easily, so that's good. You definitely want to make sure you've got something you don't care about underneath. Was that scary for you guys? <laughs> I'm keeping it so my fingers are over here, the pressure's going that way, so I should be fine. Okay, let's see if I got enough through that I can just work it with my without the straight edge now. So it's pretty thick. So I think what I'll do, I wish I could pause. Um, I think what I'll do is maybe if I get this out of the way, I want you guys to be able to see it. Let me get that out of the way real quick. And so this, this stuff, you just, you know, peel it away. I don't know if there's a use for it, but Probably not. I don't know the pressure of doing it that way. All right, so that's at least out of the way. Oops, I'm coming off my line just a little bit. Sorry if my head was in the way. Okay, you guys get the idea. I'm gonna pause this and keep working on it until I've got it cut away and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. That literally took me about one minute longer so I probably didn't need to uh, pause. I've got a nice piece of chipboard for another book though. That's good and I'll have another one over on this side. So then this, we just wanna pull off. So here's my cut. I'm gonna have quite the little mess to clean up. On this side, we are just gonna cut it. So you can see how it would be better to have your, these on the spine. It's just, it's not what they had at the thrift store yesterday and I didn't wanna go and buy a new one. Things like this aren't as cheap as they used to be. So I figured used was much better choice if I could find one. And I was lucky to find two of the same thing. And that was all they had. Okay. So let me get all of this out of the way. Nasty. All right. I'm going to have to get a broom out. Okay, so then we have the vinyl covering. We just want to pull that off. Um, you have to be kind of careful so that you don't bend your 
um, chipboard. Because honestly, I don't know how I could manage to use it without this um, on it. I don't, I don't know how I could figure that out. So if I messed up my chipboard, I think it would just be trash. Maybe one of you guys could figure out how to do it, but I, I don't know. You just have to keep working with it. This doesn't have a middle one, so it just pulls out. I, I would love to say just, but it, you know, it takes more work. It's all work. Maybe I can figure out how to fast forward also, huh? I don't know. I'm sure that's something that can be done, but I don't know how to do that either. Oh my goodness. Whatever is stuck up underneath here won't show, um, but I'm trying to, I want it to be as smooth as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna just yank, okay. So there, it finally came off. And I've got this little piece here. This will be covered, though, with fabric. So I'm not too concerned about that. I might take, you know, something like this to it if I thought that was going to stick up. But I don't think that's too much of a big deal. I'm just trying to get under here, cut it where it needs to be cut, and do the same thing. I'm just pulling. It's not coming yet. Oh, there it goes. So just so you know, you guys, it's not simple and it will require a little bit of elbow grease. That one came off nice and clean. This one, let me see, I'm gonna get my little pliers out. They're just jewelry pliers, so I don't know if it'll be good enough to do anything. But we'll try. Oh, I got it. Okay. Alrighty, so here it is. And I can take and, you know, smooth that out. But So this is going to be the spine. Now, one book is smaller. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is adding some fabric all the way around to make it so that it fits the size better. I think that's what I'll do. And then also it has these little pointy things here. And I think I'm going to try to take some um, actual, you know, heavier duty pliers and bend those down. There's on either side. I think that's what I'm going to do. So there we go. Okay, snap back, you guys. Sorry. This one, though, is more, you know, to the size, so it should be fine. So that is how you get it loose. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make the... Oh gosh, this, the fabric that's going to go over it. So the fabric will cover this and stick off. And so it'll end up coming around here and, and attaching to the book. I'll probably get rid of some of this shiny so that it has something uh, more porous to stick to. You know, same thing on this side. And then also I will slide fabric underneath. And if you just put a little cut in the top, it'll go around this little thing that I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a little thing down inside on either side that your fabric will have to go around, but it's pretty easy and I'll show you when I do that as well. So I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna get these books taken apart um, 
and then figure out my fabrics and things like that. So see you soon. Okay, part three. I have no idea how many parts this is going to take because, you know, when you're making something, you come across things that you don't foresee happening. And I knew this because it happened in the past, but I forgot. So I have things prepared here. This is the um, cover. And what I did was I took and I used um, a straight edge and my X-Acto knife. And I took some of the shiny off. That will be covered with fabric. Uh, but it's going to be covered with something else beforehand. Uh, but I was just afraid that it wouldn't stick otherwise. But if you notice, when I've hole punched these as well. But if you notice, there's a problem. When I go to put the cover on, all of these pages are going to be hanging out. And once I did that, I was like, oh, that's right. I remember. And um, so what I have to do is add to this. I'm going to show you how I'm going to add to it. I have taken some of the chipboard from the file folder or the, um, you know what it's called, three ring binder. And I'm going to add it to the edge and I am going to place paper over the top. I've done this in the past, you guys. It is very sturdy. I've never had a book come apart um, when doing this, so it works out great. I think that what I'm going to do, this is Aline's Quick Dry Techie Glue, and I am just going to cover both of these sides, you know, this one and this one, with glue. I'll put a little glue in the middle as well. And I'm giving it plenty of glue. And this, it dries quick, but not so fast that I can't play with it a little bit. So um, we'll have plenty of time to get it working. You guys, I haven't even gotten into my scrapbook paper to see if I have good paper to go with this journal. I hope I do. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up, and I'm just going to run a bead along here. It's going to get glue on my work surface, but I'll just stop and clean it up when we're done. Starting to bow. Okay, and then I cut this to fit. It's a really heavy um, cardstock. It's so heavy that my printer won't even accept it. So it's giving it quite a bit of st um, stability. to take something wet and clean that up when we're done. Okay, and then on the inside of the book, um, it has paper, so I didn't have to remove any of that. Oh, I forgot to cut a piece of paper for this side. I had cut this one to fit the back side of the book. Well, let's just, I have a piece here that's scrap, so let's just use it. Um, you know, I, I want it to be a little bigger. So yeah, we'll go ahead and use this one. I want there to be plenty of something grabbing on to both sides. I'm going to put just another little bead down in here and it'll squish down in. And then we will take this one, make sure I have the bigger of the two. I didn't. And we're going to put a bunch of glue on this one. Plenty, plenty, plenty of glue. I don't want to 
have it come apart on me. sure that's plenty Got a little on the page there and again this will be covered in fabric so it's you know fine that it's white it doesn't have to have any great design to it or anything. It's all gonna be covered up. I just wanna make sure it's nice and, you know, butted up to it and attached really well. I'm making a real good mess. Okay, so now when I go to put it on, there will be a little bit of space here because of fabric, but you'll see now it covers the pages that would have been sticking out. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same to the back side. Um, I've already taken paper away and I'm gonna have to, well, Let's see. I have this cut already. So that is going to go here. And then I will use this piece because it's fine if that's not got glue on it. That'll be plenty of coverage. So I will glue this down, turn it over, add paper on this side as well. And then that will have extended our cover. All right, we'll see what I come up with next for you guys. See you soon. Okay, you guys, it's been hours. I'm back. I've been figuring out fabrics and things like that, and now I am ready to do some gluing. I will, I'm gonna start by gluing this one down. I have chosen this fabric, and I went ahead and added some ruffle on either side of that. And I just wanna make sure that I'm where you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna glue this down sort of in the center. And let's see, best way to find the center, I don't know, fold it in half. I'm gonna just put a little divot and then mark it with my pencil and then hopefully I can eyeball it from underneath. And, um, okay, so what I did with my fabric was I used heat and bond that I get at Hobby Lobby. Unfortunately, Hobby Lobby doesn't have coupons anymore, so I don't know when it goes on sale, but I imagine you can get it at Joanne Fabric when they have um, a coupon. I don't know if Michaels carries that sort of thing or not. I kind of feel like they don't, but but I don't know. They might. I only say I feel like they don't because they don't have fabric, but. Okay, so about two and a half here. Oh yeah, I already figured out. I wanted to hopefully eyeball it. That's what I was going to do. But, but I'm going to glue it first. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue it first. I am gluing it. Oh, so anyway, I did the fusible. And then I iron... Um, what's it called? Tissue paper over the top of it. A lot of people don't do that. I just like it like that. I feel like it gives a bit of a barrier, more of a barrier, so that the glue doesn't seep through. But if you don't feel like that's necessary, then don't worry about it. 
probably using more glue than necessary, but you know, it's better safe than sorry. Now is when I'm gonna try and, maybe if I close it, sorry about the noise. I hope I don't drop it, let's see. Okay. And then I can move it up or down. So I made that little pencil mark and I'm just kind of lining it up with, you know, pencil mark and this. Hoping that I get it. And I have to go back and forth, you know how that is. Once you move something, the other side moves too. Okay. And you have some time, of course, with Fabri-Tac. So you guys understand more now what I'm doing. If you didn't before, I'm sure it makes a little bit more sense now. I'm going to put my bone folder under there and just do a little squishing, make sure it's all touching. And then of course, you know that there's the same amount of hangover on either side. Okay, and now this, this is the back and it will go on top here and um, I'm gonna leave you know space for plenty of movement I'm hoping and then this one will go here hopefully I'm not covering up too much I mean I'm gonna have to cover up quite a bit of the picture I think actually I'm going to do a little less, I'm going to scoot it just a little bit if I can. I think I'll do a little less in the front so I don't cover up as much of the picture. I don't know if it moved. I think if it did move, it moved right back again. down. And I am going to leave just a little bit of the edge over here in case I want to stick some sort of ruffle underneath once once I see it all done and put together I might want to add something. So I'm not going to glue it all the way down yet, but it'll be far enough down that everything will hold. But I can still poke something underneath there if I want to. Now that ribbon that I put on the front is kind of holding it up a little bit. I would say what is my measurement here? It's about a quarter of an inch. I don't know if that's too much. I don't think that it's too much, but I hope not. <laughs> that's good. It gives plenty of room for the ring because the, it's a big ring. I think that's pretty... Okay, I'm going to get the other side glued down. And then I'm going to do the same to leave some space in case I want to add something.
so I have no idea how long this video is going to be since this is going to be the fourth part of it, but I'm trying not to have them be too long. I feel like somebody asked me a while ago to show how to do this, but it was when I wasn't making videos and um, how I, you know, made this one. So hopefully they find this. That seems good. I hope. It seem a little crooked. You know how the fabric, even though you tear it and it tears along the seams, it doesn't always line up the way you want it to. It's really pretty, right? I like that. And so I'll have stuff sticking out of the top so that it doesn't look so weird having this be so much bigger than this. It'll it'll all work out in the end. Okay, so let's let that... I don't know what the best way... I think the best way to have it is to fold it so everything's touching. And then I'm going to move on to this one. I'm going to go ahead and take out the pages because those will just get in the way. Sorry about the wiggle if there was one. And the noise. I'm just going to clip these together so that hopefully they're easier to put in when I'm ready for them there and I'm going to put this underneath to close it. Hopefully that wasn't as loud. And then on this one I've chosen this fabric you know because it's a much different feel. Let's go ahead and find the center. So the reason why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it is I'm giving the um, that the spine a chance to dry before adding the the inner spine. I'm giving the outer spine a chance to dry. So I thought I'd go ahead and move on to this one. I hope you don't mind seeing it again. If so, you know, fast forward. That's all good and fine. Okay, same idea here. And on this one I added some rickrack and then this little trim. All right. Let's go ahead and glue. So it's the inner one that I would really like for you guys to stick around and see because it's a little more confusing, but very, very simple, really. I mean, it's totally easy, but there are posts going through the, the thing right here. There are posts and so you can't just slide the fabric through. You have to get it around um, the posts, but you just snip the fabric and it totally gets covered up. It's not a big deal at all. And again, I'm gonna try and line up my marks with the center things. can't see this one. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's good. And I think that one's good too. And I'm going to, I have things, you know, I, you guys would be shocked at the mess that I make. If it appears that I'm very um, organized. <laughs> I'm not, it's not that I'm not organized, but I'm, 
I'm a messy crafter. I am. I admit it. I hate to admit it because I try to be very neat otherwise. I'm the kind of person that follows people around in my house and cleans up after them. So I have to say, and I'm not a germaphobe, but maybe a little. <laughs> I'm not, but maybe a little. Um, I want this to be the front. So, I mean, that, that maybe is upside down now, but that's okay. It still opens and closes the same way. Um, yeah, a little, little bit, but not. My, my brother is, you guys, my brother is a germaphobe. <laughs> I get grossed out real easily, though, by, if I think about it too much. So, going to hotels, it's really hard for me, and I've had to go to a lot of hotels. I don't think I'm going to be adding anything, so I'm going to go right up to the edge. I have been to a lot of hotels in the last couple of months, and um, if I could figure out how to hover, I would. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I, I, it makes me, it freaks me out a little bit. It makes me a little bit angry. Um, but I, I imagine if I wanted to pay $400 for a hotel room, I wouldn't have to worry so much about it because maybe they clean a little bit better. But you guys, hotels are so expensive. If you haven't been out traveling lately, it is ridiculous. And even the ones that you want to hover, they charge more than they should, way more than they should. Um, and... Like, a lot of the, the room looks fine, but the bathroom, like, people spend some time in that bathroom and clean it, for goodness sake. So, I've been known to go to the store and buy cleaning supplies to clean because I get so freaked out about it. Yeah. And I always think, I just want to go home and clean my house. <laughs> I'm in these hotels. I just want to go home and clean my house because I can. And then I get home, I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's... I mean, I keep my house clean. One of the things that grosses me out about hotels are the corners. I'm like, do they not know there are corners? And so you look in the corner and, I mean, for goodness sakes, people clean the corners. My corners are clean. Ah, <laughs> oh. You guys probably think I'm horrible. I'm sorry. I'm not, but, and, and people like can clean to their own standards, but if you're going to be charging people, give them a clean bathroom for goodness sake. So that's my, my complaint for the day. This one has even more hanging out than the other one. But, um, up, you know, around the edges because it's a smaller book, but don't worry. I won't, I won't leave it to look weird. I will make sure that it all looks fine in the end. I just want to make sure my, my gaps here are pretty equal. And then how it lines up here. I realized I didn't need to worry about bending um those sharper points that I talked about before because they're going to be covered so it's it's fine all right I think we're good so I'm going to move this one and let it dry and try to find a good place for it I guess I'll just do this okay so now we will do the inside Here is what we do. We're going to just take it and snip it. It is as simple as that. It sounds kind of scary, but it's not. And so what you need to do is you need to look inside and you can see the this thing right inside there. We need to snip up to that point. So from the edge of the fabric, it's about an inch and a half. I think I'll go just a little bit farther than that so I don't have to do it too many times. So I'm going to find the center. And 
market. And then we're gonna go up an inch and a half. Now we'll go just a little bit more than that, inch and three quarters maybe. Well, I'll go to about here because I went all the way to the edge. Did I get the center all the way up? Who knows? Who knows? I think I did. Let's see. It's okay if I crease it because it's going to be underneath the thing. I don't want it to hit in a weird spot. Okay, so now we're going to cut it. And then if you want, you can just give it a little notch so it has a little give to go around the... I don't even know what you call that thing in there, a post or something. And then we're going to slide it on in. I did the same thing with this fabric. I put the um, heat and bond and the... Um, fabric, uh, what's it called? Tissue paper. Okay, so see how it's in there, you guys? So simple. It doesn't seem like it's that going to be that easy, but it is just that easy. And then down here, when you are all finished gluing it all in and stuff like that, you're never going to see that cut that you made. But if you feel like you need to, you could cover it with something. I am going to slide some glue in there to keep it in place. I want to do that on either side first. Make sure that's good and down. everything's where I want it. It can still slide so I'm going to pull it up and line it up a little bit. You know again you tear it but it tears crooked even though it shouldn't but it does. isn't bothering you. I can lift up and put some down in here also. Probably should. Where the cut is. I think that what I'll do is um, just show it to you just this one time. And um, I'll do the other one on my own so that I can stop the video. I have to go out and rake leaves. Ugh, I don't want to. Okay, now I want my my fabric to, fabric to go down inside of there. So this this is going to be a little bit more work because I have to keep on pushing it on in and hopefully, you know, have it dry. 
while they're touching and um, bonding to each other. So, and the Fabri-Tac doesn't dry as quickly as sometimes I would like for it to. Okay, so I want to go down in there and then up over the edge. So that when it, you know, opens and closes, it's not buckling out. It's pretty good. All right, you guys, one more side. I'll put the um put a little bit more glue there. I'll put the pages back in too so you can see that they don't hang out because we extended the and they're real sturdy. Just like I I had done it in the past, so I knew it worked. Um, but I used like I said, this white paper it was really thick cardstock, so thick that it won't it won't go through my printer. So I don't know what it is exactly, but it's a heavy one. Okay. I hope I got everything on the right direction. Nothing is upside down. That's good. Ooh, very pretty, very pretty. Okay. Let's get the pages back in it and we will call this one good. Noise, you guys, noise. Plug your ears if you need to. Okay, so you see there's a big um, gap over here, but when you go to close it, so we definitely needed to add that, and there might be a little bit of hangout still, but I'll be adding um, ribbon and fabrics and all the kinds of things that I like to add, so nothing, it won't be showing, it'll be fine. So there we go. That is how I made that in the original one that I made a while back. If you were one of the people asking, and um, when I turn it off, I will go ahead and work on this one and get it ready to go. And then hopefully I can start um, filming them up. All right. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching.